What's going on, guilty guys and gals, and welcome back to Straw 2. Today we're going to be talking about clowns. I'm sure that'll be it. Just clowns. <laughs> clowns will be a large portion of this, though. No, Kanade. There is a way to move the torso without throwing it into the chimney. Moreover, by using this way, you could also move the torso from Department C to A without getting caught. Does such a way really exist? I'm going to move my mic a little bit. Whoop. Impossible. There is no such way. Well, there is. It's by using the parade dolls. Parade dolls? This was just a spark of an idea, but the dolls move on their own, and they are empty inside. So if you put the torso inside the dolls of the storehouse at Department C before the parade, the torso will automatically get sent with the parade without garnering any suspicion. <laughs> God damn it! now you're unraveling my clown conspiracy. <laughs> I'm impressed, Whitey. Oh, that was what I was going to say. In addition to what she said, the torso would inevitably arrive at Department A's storehouse after the parade, which was exactly the place Kanade Odonokoji was supposed to investigate during your search. Oh. So she had a way of retrieving it back. Then the torso was hidden inside the storehouse. And in the six minute gap between 7.36 and when Sora left at 7.42, she went inside the ghost house during this time and retrieved the torso. Uh-huh. In addition to that, Ibiki Nokoji was probably hiding in the storehouse as well. When the white hair gang started to search Department A, that girl headed straight to the storehouse. And switch places with the real Kanade Odenokoji. After that, the little shit confirms that White Hair left the ghost house and signals the sis using the handbooks. Yikes. And the little shit, who was standing by with the torso in the storehouse, heads straight to the ghost house. Wow. Meanwhile, the little shit returns to the White Hair gang. <laughs> We're not a gang, okay? <laughs> We previously thought that six minutes would be too short of time to move the corpse between the storehouse and the ghost house. However, that was because we considered moving all the body pieces. If it was just the torso, it would have definitely been possible. I can't believe they thought of this many methods. Amazing, Sora! To move body parts around, but again, it is Kanade. And? So what? As previously mentioned, the monorail only passes through the ghost house four times in the span of an hour. We have five more body pieces to take care of, even excluding the torso. How were we to move these? Well... Yeah, but your crap about the monorails? <laughs> you mean seven times, not four, you little lion bastard. What? How come? It takes 15 minutes for a round trip, and the monorail becomes inactive after an hour. There are two different kinds of the monorail, one for each direction. To go past the ghost house, you need to take the track between Department A and C. Simply said, if you transfer between the two monorails and ride only the tracks between Departments A and C, there's no need for a full round trip. That actually makes sense. Ah! <laughs> huh? Wait, how did the order and direction of the monorails go again? <laughs> Hold on a sec, I had it written down just in case. See, Yuriko's being useful for once. <laughs> uh, here it is. At every other hour, the monorail starts at Department B and goes along the path of B-A-C. And five minutes later, another monorail takes its departure towards the other direction. Hold on. So, if we draw out the timetable... Quit wasting time. Here, give me that. I'll draw it for you. <laughs> oh god. Is this an equation? Now do you get what I mean? The focal point here is starting from six o'clock. The culprit was standing by with the corpse. At the... Department C station. Shibai's voice makes me yawn. It's because I'm using the back of my throat. 
When the train headed to Department A at, at 6.10, she rides to Department A. Here she'll go past the ghost house for the first time and throws one of the pieces. One down. She arrives at Department A at 6.15, waits five minutes for the tram to move in the opposite direction. When the train eventually arrives, she rides it back to C. During that time, she passes through the ghost house again. Two down. Department C again at 6.25, but this time, the train she'll transfer to has already arrived. She transfers right away to head to Department A. Three down. If you repeat this process... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, do I need to go any further? You got it by now, right? He's right. Using this method, you can pass the ghost house a total of seven times. And the, and the last train arrives in Department A at exactly seven o'clock. Perhaps Kanata even took this into account when coming up with their scheme. I see. So I made a mistake. It seems like you'd be able to throw the seven course pieces through the chimney. But what difference does it make? Uh, a big difference. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... <laughs> Even with the torso carried by the parade dolls, that still leaves two remaining body pieces. Quite a mystery, yes? What happened to those two pieces, yes? Just how did I move them, yes? Answer me! I mean, you could have just also put it in the parade doll. <laughs> Can't you fit the two pieces with the torso inside the parade dolls? Even if the storehouse is a bit far away, I'm sure six minutes is enough to manage two additional body pieces, especially if they were small ones. I doubt it. Her torso is quite large and heavy, after all. I mean, I guess for Kanade, that's true. And what about the small parts of the body, like hands and feet? They seem pretty possible. Hands? <laughs> hands? That's it? The two remaining pieces should definitely be the hands. What do you mean? She needed them. Think about it. Iroha Sahibiki entering the ghost house between 555 and 557. That means she used Setsuka's handbook. Which means that she had Setsuka's hand to turn the handbook on. I, there was an extra word there. So the remaining two hands were carried by Miss Oldasis herself. Hmm? Hold on, that's right before the parade. Hibiki was disguised as Kanade. She would have had to meet up with us right after, so she wouldn't have even had enough time to hide the hands. That means she had the hands with her when she was with us? I was kind of nervous about this being the case. It just felt too easy for the game. It's like easy drama, right? <laughs> That's exactly the problem, bro. If she had them, we definitely would have noticed them. Finally, some sensible logic. You're most absolutely right. Even if it was my sis that was with you during that parade. No one knows the whereabouts of those hands during the time. Do you finally see the contradictions? No. It might not actually be a contradiction. Sora? I have a hunch where that hand could have been, actually. Wait. Sora! Perhaps you're under the false impression that you're smart just because you were able to tag along with Shobai's theory. Rude. You're just a disgusting parasite that's always sucking off someone else's ideas and theories! Okay. Sure. The sheer arrogance in your face! As if you figured something out on your own! It's disgusting. Would you please stay out of my sight before I throw up at the sight of your disgusting face? I could say the same to you. I mean, look at you. <laughs> no, Kanade. We'll see just who's being arrogant here. <laughs> Lol. Owned. This should be Kanade's final line of defense. Break through this, and we might be able to end this trial once and for all. I don't know. There's still, like, five videos left, so <laughs> I'm, I'm unsure. Oh, God. You make me laugh. Would you just shut up? <laughs> Everything's a contradiction. Have you even tried thinking? Bullshit. <laughs> I... Oh my god, that laugh. I don't... 
like this one. <laughs> it's a good look for Kanade, alright? It suits her very well. But, uh, that giant, giant mouth is making me uncomfortable. <laughs> They'll never find out. Oh? Everything is a contradiction. Oh boy. Also, does she have like a little alien face as a necklace? It's probably a skull. It just looks like that alien <laughs> face. <laughs> Boom. Oh man, we got rid of her music notes. <laughs> oh no. Eek. Even like the purple looks menacing. Like the purple and pink-ish hair even looks menacing on this render. <laughs> It's scary. That is scary. <laughs> I don't know what to say right now, because, I mean, we knew it was... Did I fuck this up? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, I, I, just, I just don't know. <laughs> I still don't... I, can you, my, like, worry is that Kanade isn't actually the culprit. Like, she made Hibiki do it or something. And that we're gonna have to live with her after this. <laughs> That's my biggest concern. Because, like, oh my god. That'd be kind of horrible, you know? <laughs> Especially after she basically kills her own sister. If that's the way this is gonna go. We'll see. I think I've said before, um, how I miss, I miss MTB, <laughs> the Trigger Happy Havoc version of this minigame, where it was like a rhythm game. I know it, like, this game is very different, right? Like, I don't expect it to do, like, the whole rhythm game thing <laughs> exactly, but, um, wow, what even changed there? Hands, using hands to correct body shape. That's... I, I know what this means. I don't want to say it, but Jesus. Oh God. Don't look, children. You know where those hands are now, right? <laughs> I don't have to say it, even though I'm about to, in probably like Sora's voice. This is, this is just kind of gross. <laughs> Her chest. <laughs> yep, here we go. <laughs> She must have hidden Setsuka's hands inside her clothes. Or should I say, on her chest. Ah, her chest? <laughs> Even if Ibiki looks identical to Kanade, there's one, well, two, big difference. <laughs> they're not completely the same. Particularly, their body shape is different. The Kanade we saw at the parade was identical to Kanade to the point where it's almost unbelievable it was actually Ibiki. Then we can assume that she probably used some objects to correct her body shape. And you're saying that the objects used were Setsuka's hands? Yes. Considering the black plastic bags near the fireplace, they probably used those to carry the corpse pieces. If you wrap the hands with multiple plastic bags and hold it inside your clothes... <laughs> you could not only carry the hands without suspicion while also correcting your body shape. You could even make a small hole in the bag so that the fingerprints would be exposed, and you can open the handbook just by putting it inside your clothes. Ew! <laughs> I don't like this idea. Using this method, you could freely use Setsuka's handbook to manipulate the ghost house gate records. <laughs> the idea of just, like, fingers reaching out from there. I don't like it. I see! If she didn't use the hands to correct her size, there must have been some evidence of an object being used, which there wasn't. But how in the world did you come up with that idea? What Kanade said a while ago gave me an inspiration. She said that if you put it in your clothes, it would stick out and cause suspicion, right? <laughs> well... But if it was Ibiki using it to disguise into Kanade, it would seem natural. You'd want it to stick right out, if you know what I mean. In fact, she actually needed the hands to stick out for the disguise to work. This is like... Creepy, but also very uh, interesting. <laughs> Sora, 
I must say I'm impressed. But do you have any evidence my sis had those damn bloody hands on her breasts? <laughs> yeah, that's the, uh, that's the awkward part. If you simply wrap them in plastic bags, people would soon notice if you just move a bit. Evidence that Hibiki used the hands on her breasts. So we've got rid of the whole, like, dodging the question, chest body shape thing. We're just going straight up now. I didn't notice them during the investigation, but that item was probably used here. Is this the clothes pins, finally? I've been waiting to see what the hell these clothes pins were for. <laughs> okay. Safety pins, rather. I do have proof, Kanade. There were pins found near the ghost house, presumably used to fix something in place. Oh, look at that! That's a new sprite, too! I wondered about its existence during the investigation, but now I know exactly why it was there. Those pins were used to hold the hands and clothes tight by pinning them together. And she threw them away, just like that? Girl, are you a genius or an idiot? Make up your damn mind! <laughs> Thank you, Nike. That was probably because the older sis needed to quickly undisguise herself before entering the ghost house. <laughs> she could just put him in her pocket. Undisguised? I thought Abiki disguised herself when she was leaving the pool. I don't know what you're talking about. If the disguise itself was used to carry the hands, why would she suddenly undisguise herself in front of the ghost house? I'm really good at, I'm getting good at predicting <laughs> the text here. It's pretty sweet. Alright. Moron. You have Bubblehead to thank for that. Recall who she saw entering the ghost house. Uh, stop telling me, Bubblehead! I don't know, it's kind of a cute nickname if it wasn't used so, like, um, meanly. Yeah, it was definitely Hibiki. I know they're similar, but their hairstyles and hairpins differ, differ after all. Yeah, okay. <laughs> For Kanade to make Iroha suspicious, suspicious, she needed Iroha to witness Hibiki, not herself. So she must have thrown away the pins there. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Hibiki, it it's okay. You've been useless this whole time. We know. So, when we were watching the parade, we had Satsuka's severed hands right next to us? Oh. Don't vomit in the courtroom, Yuki. <laughs> Please. That's horrifying. Yeah, no kidding. Jesus. <laughs> Think about how Hibiki feels. <laughs> I did that! Kanade, we've solved all three of the contradictions you presented. The monorail's time schedule, the transportation of the body, and carrying the two hands. I believe there aren't any contradictions left. I don't want to continue this trial any longer. Please, just admit to your crimes. You think I'm going to admit? Never! Hello? Did she die of shock? <laughs> Stupid sis ruined it all. Of course, you're gonna blame her. Giving out conclusive testimony, throwing away the pins. I can almost laugh at her stupidity. Alright. Yes, I am the culprit. Oh god. So I really was Ganade? Now you finally admitted it. <laughs> but why would you do that? It was just me. It would have been a perfect crime. But trying to use sis as an accomplice ended up getting me caught. <laughs> hey, don't be disappointed. Have some confidence. You did amazing. There aren't that many people that have smarter brains than you, even in my world. She's still tricking us. There's no way she would have overlooked this. She's definitely not the one who stabbed the body. I'm just saying. <laughs> I can guarantee you at least that. Do 
you honestly think I'll feel better with that? <laughs> Your empty praise. Stupid dude. Go back to sleep. <laughs> that aside, I have something to ask of you, Kanade. From the looks of Ibiki in this trial, her memory loss was genuine. Correct. If Sis didn't have that trait, I wouldn't have even tried to use her as an accomplice. That's fair. <laughs> you killed Setsuko, what the hell? Even without any memories, she's still stupid. You would have to be an even bigger idiot than her to use that my moron of a Sis as an accomplice while she was herself. <laughs> Poor Hibiki, man. But then... Is he about to bring up what I was talking about? Never mind. You've already admitted to your crimes, after all. It hurts me to say it. But I think this is the first time that my crime has been exposed. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. What's that supposed to mean? Whatever. What does all that matter now? She's a serial killer, yep. Yeah, because this is uh, the case where serial killers happen. <laughs> Let's end this now with our votes. I guess the last case is supposed to technically be when serial killers happen. But V3 did it in this case, so. <laughs> Astounding! This class trial was a series of intense battles between you that surpassed any trials before. As the teacher and the judge, I must say this was very interesting. Well, now that you've reached the answer, it's time to see if that answer is the truth. Look, Mikado, I don't like you, but it's your time. <laughs> Never more would there be a trial like this. But it's time to reach out to the truth. Now then, vote for the culprit with the switches in front of you. <laughs> Somebody interrupt. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Would that answer be the truth? Or lies? <laughs> Now! Kanade's the culprit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Wait. Something's not right. She thought this far ahead. Wait! Everyone, wait a minute. Don't vote just yet. Whoa! You startled me, Sora. <laughs> Not this again! What now? <laughs> I just want to go to bed. What's the matter, Sora? I was literally just about to push the button. Khan is like, oh, come on. Well... What's the matter indeed? <laughs> Kanadi herself admitted to it. The case has been solved. There shouldn't be anything wrong about it. But what is this feeling? So sudden and new. I felt the moment I laid eyes on her. <laughs> I can't shave, shave off this feeling that I shouldn't let the trial end like this. Like if some unknown force is behind me. What is this unsettling feeling? Oh God, are you Kibo? <laughs> Shobai. What? <laughs> I want to ask you, the person who almost single-handedly solved this case. Are you sure we're going to be fine ending the trial with Kanade as the culprit? Uh? <laughs> uh? I have no reason. I don't know myself why I'm doing this. But I'm not just saying this. I'm serious, more than ever right now. Sora, are you alright? You seem a bit weird right now. I don't think Kanade's the culprit. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, what in tarnation? <laughs> what in tarnation? She just like cocks her head to the side a bit, like, what? 
Sora, what are you on about? <laughs> Even I'm confused right now. Well, the thing is... I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm on about. Sora, perhaps the long trial's taken a toll on you. You do look tired, after all. Right. I mean, the case is over right now. Please, just once more. Let's discuss this just once more. We must have missed something. I feel like we've missed something very important. But there's literally nothing more to talk about! You're a journalist, Nikkei. Come on, you gotta get all the details. I can't present you with reasons. Just please believe in me. I beg of you. Even if you say so. No. Do what the girl says. Shall I? I thought it was over as well. But there's something left. We need to discuss about that something. I mean, for me, you're basically extending my life a bit, so I don't mind. But as the culprit, I don't know what there's left to do. Oh, don't you. I'm shaking my fist. Sussy. Is Kanade not the culprit? I don't know. But I know she shouldn't have let the trial end this way. Then, then I'm going to trust you, Saucy. Damn, because we're about to just break that trust. Honestly, I, I can't grasp the reality of this situation. I don't have any memory of today. Kanade killing Suka. And I helped her. I don't want to believe any of that. You helped her a bit more, I think. So even if I'm terrified, I'm going to trust Kanade once more. Kanade! Kanade's my sister, after all! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, Hibiki. What? Seriously, what's going on with this trial? <laughs> this has been Shinji's face this entire thing. Sora. You know what? I don't know what's going on, but I'm on Sora's side. Of course you are, Yuriko. That's why I keep, that's why you're my uh, my best friend in this game. Me too. Hey, Yuki. Glad you've come over to the light side again. I'm gonna trust Sora. A little more discussion isn't going to hurt anyone after all. I'm telling you, it's a waste of time. Honestly, can't understand the logic behind all of this. Uh... <laughs> I don't know what I've done, nor do I know if it was the right thing to do. It was as if some force other than my own conscious was working my to control my actions. That's strange. Don't know if I like that. Please don't be a robot or something. I might be troubling everyone with a random thought that has no basis. But still, I can't go against this force. All that's left for me is to follow it. Here we go again! <laughs> okay, a little bit of a musical uh, thing there. Oh, interesting. Oh, split decision. Interesting. It's time for the scrum debate. I should have known when the music started up, but oh well. <laughs> and Hibiki. And Teruya. Hey, nice. This is a pretty good team. Iroha's on the other side, though. <laughs> also, Mikado, who definitely knew something was wrong this whole time. Mikado, why? She's the culprit. She's not the culprit. Also, I like how Kanade's on the side of herself being the culprit. <laughs> this just shows that she's like, I'm the culprit. And what should we discuss? I admitted it. Oh, you solved every trick. Can't we just let this end? There's nothing left to discuss about. What is wrong with you guys? It's not like we have any other theories. It's just a waste of time. 
Are you suggesting the involvement of a third party? Then we'd be back at square one. Are you saying that there was another suspect that even I, the culprit, was unaware of? What? What? Oh no. I need to logically match our points together. Are you telling me somebody used Kanade's plan to kill Setsuka? That is... oh no. Who could have done that though? I'm the culprit. What more should we discuss? Kanade's not the culprit! We must have made a mistake somewhere! We solved every trick! There may be unsolved tricks left. I believe in Sora. There's nothing left to discuss. We won't know for sure unless we actually discuss it. It's not like we have any other theories. It's just a waste of time. Sora isn't trying to suggest new theories. She's trying to discuss more about the case. Are you suggesting the involvement of a third party? A third party, my ass. Quit your bullshit. Okay, good. Phew! <laughs> there are no other suspects. However, we cannot end the trial like this. Trust me. Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-
But where's the torso really? As in like we were getting big brain and now we're undoing the big brain. The way we've gotten rid of the torso as well as some of the intestines. You can drain the flesh bit. Bit, bit by bit down the drain, but... Yeah. That's not the important part. The important part is, was that really the only reason? Since you've oh so kindly admitted to your crime, I want to ask you. Did you really get rid of it just for that? Of course. It's what you've deduced, remember? You big smart man. You're so smart. <laughs> From my inspection, the only lefties here were Iroha and me. I didn't, if I didn't take care of it, it would have... come back later to bite me. But it would have cast blame on Iroha, and that's what you wanted, right? I did try to abuse it to frame Iroha, but that plan also failed. <laughs> How could you? I was gassing you up at the beginning of this trial. Really? Huh? I'm not the type to brag, but I got an eye for talent. <laughs> I'm the ultimate talent scout. I mean, what? You, a person with that big of a brain, of all people, wouldn't have done this sloppily. You say that, but in the end, Kanade did choose this method, right? She herself admitted it. If this was done by the spur of the moment, she might have taken this route. But this was meticulously planned. But from drug and bubblehead to rigging the gate record, she definitely planned this way ahead of time. A double-layered trap of framing her own sister as the culprit, and has a plan B framing bubblehead. And even after that was busted, she calmly pointed out contradictions to the theory of her being the culprit. And that same person forgot about the stab wounds, precipitately used her left hand, and only then took care of it. She might have not known about the difference between the stab wounds beforehand. She definitely bought into it, though. Have you even been listening? By the looks of her, her dismemberment skills, she's used to this kind of work. Business, same diff. <laughs> I can guarantee you there was no way that a person of that level didn't know about the stab wounds. But she's the ultimate guitarist! Considering her profession, isn't it unlikely she would have reached that kind of level? If she really did murder Setsuka, she's probably a void. The void is a criminal syndicate, so that might be entirely possible. Shobai does have a point. The fact she got rid of the torso means that she would have known she would be caught by the left-handed stab wound. If she knew that, she could have just stabbed Setsuka with her right hand. Why would she have gone through the hassle of getting rid of the evidence? Mm hmm. It's just that I only realized after I'd stabbed her. Right, totally. <laughs> you planned everything but the actual moment of murder. As you might have already guessed, the knife used to stab Setsuka was the folding one that is in everybody's room. I stabbed her with my left hand without much thought, and only then I realized the potential danger of leaving that kind of evidence. I never imagined there would actually be someone who'd suspect me because of that, but... But that may be turned into reality for you, Shobai. That's all there is to it. You, who planned this whole mindfuck, stabbed her without much thought? Okay, now I know you're hiding something. You would have definitely found another method. You could have stabbed her with literally anything but a knife. <laughs> Even I can't think of many options off the top of my head right now. Using your right hand to create more... Stab wounds so the stab wounds won't be visible. 
and repeatedly stabbing her with both your hands so we won't be able to tell which one was the first. Blow. The killing blow. Are we really continuing this? You know what? You know what I hate the most? Repeating useless stuff that's already over. Just execute me already. Mm hmm. No, I don't think we will be doing that. Wait, Shobai, enough about that. What about the second suspicious thing? The reason Hibiki cooperated. We don't really go we didn't really go over this in detail during the trial. But why do you think Hibiki Oda no, Hibiki Oda no Koji cooperated with his sister in the first place? Huh? I had just assumed it was because she went into this like catatonic state and was just open to suggestion, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Why did she? Didn't Kanadi mention something about the altar? That she believed that sacrificing Setsuka's body would grant her wish. Uh, that's right. In the motor video, Kanadi said that her video featured her parents, right? She helped kill Setsuka to save her parents. Even if it meant she bloodied her own hands. Wait, is that really how that went? Yuki? Even if she really believed that concept and put her body on the altar. That definitely is possible, but that's not all she did, right? She disguised herself, rigged the gate records together with Kanade. Isn't that weird? All she had to do to grant her wish was put each body part on the altar. There was no reason for her to follow the rest of Kanade's plans. You're right. Hibiki wasn't quite her er, Hibiki wasn't quite herself this morning, granted, but it wasn't like she'd lost her mind or anything. Even if seeing Setsuka's dead body made her go mad, it's definitely not normal. Maybe we should think more about this. Also, she, like, just watched a parade with us after <laughs> after Setsuka's death with, like, severed hands, like, touching her at all times. There's something weird. Maybe we should ask her about this directly. Hibiki, why were you this cooperative to Kanade's plans? Even if you ask me, I have no memory of this. I... Mm, I don't know. I don't know what's what. Considering that she's been next to useless in this trial, it seems that would be a waste of time. The trick wouldn't have worked without Hibiki helping Kanade with everything throughout. Why did she agree to all of this? If it succeeded, she would have died. And if it failed, her sis would have died. You're right. Come to think of it, this is pretty weird. The culprit is only one person. Hibiki doesn't have any benefit of becoming an accomplice. Uh-oh. Uh. Shobai? <laughs> so that's it. That was it. Holy mackerel. This guy's gone bonkers as well. <laughs> Holy mackerel? What do you mean? <laughs> I got it. The crazy theory that solves all of our questions. Oh? Uh, really? What is it? This is the part people were talking about. Hibiki Ono no Koji, you're also the culprit. Huh? The culprit's Kanade, isn't it? How is that possible? Did you even hear what I said? I said, also. They're not just accomplices. They're both the true culprit. How does that work? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? That's impossible. There should only be one culprit according to the class trial rules. It's against the rules for there to be two of them. Two of them. Two of them. Since when did the rules say so? What? Don't believe me? 
Pull out your handbooks right now and read rule number six. So this is where the double murder part comes in, huh? Wow, okay. Hold on a second. Rule six. If two murders each perform if two murders each performed by different black end occurs consecutively, only the one committed earlier is acknowledged. That doesn't say if one murder is committed by two black ends. Interesting, yeah. The part we need to focus on is the part about consecutive murders. This is considering when there are two different black and who separately killed two different victims. In the case of two separate blackens targeting one victim, there's no rule specified about it. Wait, then what happens if something like this case happens? Hmm, if it isn't a special case like Rule 6, normally the person who last injured the victim, while they were still alive, becomes the culprit. Right. What do you mean by that? That was a part of draw. To put simply, let's say Rohar stabs Teruya with a knife. <laughs> Jesus. If I stab the dying Teruya before his last breath, I would become the blackened that killed Teruya. So it becomes a game of who made the last shot. I see. If there were two separate victims in culprit pairs, then the one that play took place earlier gets prioritized. But for two killers and one target, the one who made the finishing blow is the culprit. Excuse me, uh, did you really have to use me as an example? And me too, what the hell? <laughs> but that still means that only one person can become the culprit in the end, right? You still don't get it. If the person who makes the finishing blow takes the name of the blackened, Then, if two people injure the victim at the same time, they both become the culprit, Kabish. If they didn't outright stab her, they knocked her out and stabbed her together at the same time. You're out of your mind. Even if they stabbed her together, there should have been some time difference between them. If one stabbed her just a bit later than the other, that person would have been the sole culprit. Oh, really? Then let's take it to the judge. Yo, bird. <laughs> bird? I prefer to be called a crow. That aside, hmm, rule six, you say? That was put in there just in the case of two separate murder case and ha cases happening in the span of one day. Imagine the troubles you would go through of solving two cases in one trial. Oh, you mean like trial three of Danganronpa one? Danganronpa three, sorry? This is a defense against that. But this case is a bit difficult even for me. If they injure the person at the same time, indeed. So is it possible or not? <laughs> Theoretically, yes. But in reality, it's next to impossible. If a murder occurs anywhere, the high-tech sensors of Utsuroshima detect who hit the last down... Who hit last down to 0 0.001 seconds. If anyone was even that little bit late, they would become the official culprit by the records. You see? It's impossible. What if they get it down to the same 0 0.0001 seconds? Hmm? Well, I... Ah, we'll measure it down to 0 0.0001 seconds. And if they do it within the same blah, 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 blah seconds? Yo, Shobai, what are you leading up to? If the time difference was next to zero, according to the records, you're saying? Well, if it was that pinpoint, then I admit it, they both become the blackened. Okay, here we go. Fucking bingo. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait! That's only theoretically possible, remember? Even if they thought they did it at the same time, there's naturally bound to be some time difference. Between them. 
Unless they were machines or something. Uh-oh. <laughs> Mikay's right. I mean, I am capable of doing everything right. But for my sis, it would be impossible. Throwing her under the bus even now. Hmm? Why the sudden passivity? Are you hiding something from us? What did you say? It would have been possible for you twins. If my theory is correct, and that is exactly why you couldn't have left the torso be. Of course, I'm not saying this without any basis. The proof you two can do it within the exact timing is ironically provided by Newsy over there. Huh? Me? What do you mean by that? Do you guys remember the interview that Newsy did on the twins back on the second island? No. <laughs> How on earth would we remember such a minor thing? How rude! My interviews are never something minor! Of course, I'd always remember every detail of my interviews. I even have it written down, but why do you remember that? That isn't the focus here. Just shut up and listen. If you have it written down, then that's better. Read the part about the secret behind their synergy. <laughs> Let's see here. So, you two have shown us a fantastic performance, especially the unbelievable synergy between you two. What is your secret behind this synergy? Well, we do practice day and night, but we aren't like any other twins. We're like two as one. If we're in beat, we can play within a margin of error less than 0.0. <laughs> okay. Wow, they did say that. I remember that now. Isn't that right, Kanade? Huh? Uh, yeah. I see, I see. So the fact that you're twins is a crucial factor. This is a scoop in and of itself. He's unstoppable. Well, as Shin said, we better get going before it gets too late. I hope nothing bad happens in the next 0 0.0001 seconds. You gotta be joking. <laughs> uh, wait, doesn't this mean... Now you get it. It's not completely outrageous. It's not a completely outrageous idea we're dealing with. As they said that comment themselves, even Kanadi out and Okoji affirmed it as fact. For these two, it would have been possible for them to use their special sense of beat to stab. Sit simultaneously, without any error between them. They really did? Wait! I feel like that was just an exaggeration, a playful comment by Hibiki. Logically speaking, it shouldn't be possible for two separate people. I mean... Oh my gosh. This is actually... I actually really like this because one of my favorite and most, like, prioritized things when I'm determining whether I like a Danganronpa case or not is whether it uses their talent. And this is essentially saying they use their talent, like their musical prowess as being ultimate musicians to to stab on the beat at the same exact time. That's really cool. It's still possible within the bounds of logic, you meathead. Uh, meathead? <laughs> you are a bit of a meathead, Shobai. I met a lot of people around the world working as a trafficker. Wait, I thought you were a, a broker. You took care of people's money. <laughs> There were a lot of weird bunches when it came to twins. Twins who had the exact same physical abilities. Twins who could read each other's minds. It's about time I met ones that had identical rhythmic senses. Hibiki and Kanade are identical twins, right? They say that identical twins are almost the same. Down to the genetic level. They usually have the same personality. You know those stories where twins who are separated still... ...lived similar lives when they were apart, right? Sorry, I have to break this down a little bit. <laughs> Twin studies are like a big thing in psychology. Um, because it's like a super cool thing to be able to study. It really tells you a lot about how much, like behavior is influenced by genes and how much it's influenced by environment 
and most of the time like they'll have they'll have similar like behavior in the beginning but their personalities are completely shift shaped by their environment so this is a little bit off kilter but i see if this theory were to be true then that explains the reason they got rid of setsuka's torso if they were able to time the stabbing with their rhythmic sense they must have used their primary hand the hand they use when they're playing their instruments yep it works in this case like the twin thing works in this case because they were definitely raised in the same environment right they probably couldn't risk one of them forcefully trying to use the other hand and failing. That would also explain why they couldn't have made additional stab wounds. Until Satsuka was most surely dead, they would have had to leave only the stab wounds that they made. Simultaneously. Because it's a system where the person who last injured the body becomes the culprit. But couldn't they have stabbed her after she was dead? Why would they get rid of the torso when... No, that's impossible. A stab wound made before and after the person's death differs in its... appearance. If they managed to stab her simultaneously on the first try, they would have then waited for Setsuka to die naturally. That means she died a shock from blood loss, which would have taken a lot of time. If they created a stab wound after that period of time, the difference between that and the first one would be soon found out. Probably be in the Monaco file. Then someone like me would have questioned it, thinking it was suspicious. How exactly can you distinguish the two? Go ahead and read a book in the library, dipshit. <laughs> it's about blood and skin rigidity, probably. I was just curious, okay? Why do you gotta be so mean? Uh-huh, now you're sweating. It's starting to lean the, towards the possibility of them both being the culprit. One more thing. You know what's scary about that girl? During that very interview, that girl clearly showed distress when her sister was given out info. Without any thought. And when the first trial started, that girl asked Monocro about the existence of accomplices. She did indeed. I remember picking up on that. In other words, Kanariota Nakoji was already planning a double black and murder way back during the first trial. That, that can't be. Kanari helped us numerous times during the last two trials. Because it would have mean your death, dude. That was obviously an act I had a true self. I myself didn't know what I was dealing with until now. <laughs> In the end, every decisive testimony, one way or another, all started from your damn foolish sister. You could have left the stab wounds be, since only I would have been able to tell the difference. But because you were taking that interview into account, you had to get rid of the torso. Identical down to the genetic level, eh? Ironic, you two couldn't have been more different. And see, this is exactly what I was, where I was... Shobai? Wow. This feeling of discomfort has vanished with your theory. That was it. The Kanade being the culprit wasn't all there was to it. This is exactly what I mean, right? Like, they were... Something about them is fundamentally different on a personality level. So what Yuruko said about their personalities being the same is a bit off. <laughs> Hang on. If they're both the culprit, then if we didn't listen to Sora and just voted for Kanade... Whether we voted for only Hibiki or Kanade, we would have been wrong and would have been punished. So Sora was right in the end. Amazing. How did you think of this? I did nothing, honestly. Shobai did most of the heavy lifting. Uh, so the two of them did it together. Is that the public opinion right now? Honestly, still have doubts about this, though. I agree. As much as I want to trust everyone, we have no evidence of this claim. Sure, we have no concrete proof. But if this theory were to be true, 
then we can also explain Hibiki's cooperation. If they both become the Blackened and win, they both get to escape the island. And Satsuka killed off her only... Kanade specifically killed off Hibiki's only connection, like her best friend on the island. The only one she would have actually cared to die in the trial, probably. In the beginning, so that she would have no hesitation. So Hibiki had an incentive to become an accomplice. Ho ho ho. This is the true ending of this trial. True ending. <laughs> Bad end. True end. The Orinokoji twins were the true culprit of this case. Oh god. Hello. Oh, Sora! Do you really think that makes sense? Yes? I and I alone was the culprit. You think you're really special after hearing that disgusting theory from Shobai? Uh, yes, actually. I tried to admit my crime and die peacefully, but it seems like I can't even do with that without taking a... Crack at your damn theory. Open your fucking ear holes and listen. I thought that said Earl holes. Actually, wait, it did say Earl holes. Oh, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to read this description after. Also, my throat hurts from doing that voice, but Kanade's too evil to just give her the regular, like, <laughs> voice. It had to be evil. I'm just gonna skip this for now and react to it after, probably. Okay, there we go. I think this is the end of the video, though. Damn it, it is the end of the video. I can't possibly make this one go any longer. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I can. Like, let's just see, how long have we been going? Okay, it's an hour and two. I've done longer videos, but the next video where they, like, debunk everything is probably where I'm going to... Make something even longer than this. God, Jesus. Okay, pray for me. Uh, it'll be on Friday, though, so that's not too far away. Right? Is today Wednesday or Monday? No. I don't know. It'll be next, okay? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe to see the rest. I am scared, but this makes perfect sense. Um, I had, like, an inclination that it's possible there could be, like, somebody who dies during the trial, like Hibiki was secretly poisoned the whole time or something, because it's the double murder case. There's no way they wouldn't do a double murder. Um, but this is a different way of going about it than I thought. <laughs> wow, okay. So, I totally, I totally just thought Kanade was going to make Hibiki do it and was going to get off scot-free, but this is a bit smarter, so it, it makes sense it's freaking Kanade's plan. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go now. I'm going to rest my throat because Kanade has killed my voice as well as Shobai and uh, Shinji. So, <laughs> bye.